The U.S. death toll from COVID-19 is approaching 190,000, and that is despite stringent warnings from health officials for Americans to continue social distancing and wearing masks. According to the latest numbers from Johns Hopkins University, the U.S. currently has 6.3 million cases of COVID-19, with Iowa and South Dakota emerging as new potential hotspots. Speaking earlier on CBS This Morning, the nation's leading infectious diseases expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, discussed the best ways to slow the spread of the virus in the months ahead. We know, we know that when you do four or five typical kind of public health measures, masks, physical distance, avoiding crowds, making sure you do most things outdoors versus indoors, those are the kind of things that turn around surges and also prevent us from getting surges. So I certainly would like to see a universal wearing of masks. Now, this comes as one of the companies racing to make a vaccine announced it hit a stumbling block, if you will. Elise Preston explains why AstraZeneca put its COVID-19 clinical trials on hold worldwide. On pause for now, drug maker AstraZeneca is halting its phase three trial of a possible COVID-19 vaccine after one participant came down with an unexplained illness. It's not exactly known what happened to the patient or if it's even linked to the vaccine. Dr. Jeff Ponoff works at University of Wisconsin Health, a testing site for the potential vaccine. He took the drug last week and says it's not unusual for trials to be brought to a temporary standstill. If there's any a whisper or a wisp of something that would have gone wrong, or sometimes it's just related to regulatory uh, issues, there's so much paperwork and I's dotted, T's crossed, that they would stop the trial temporarily while they figure something out. Drug maker Moderna is also in phase three. Dr. Richard Novak oversees its testing testing site in Chicago. There is some political pressure uh, and um, uh, fortunately I feel like we've been mostly shielded from it. Yesterday, President Trump reiterated his promise a vaccine will be out by the end of the year. And we're going to get it out fast. The vaccine will be safe. These are the greatest companies in the world that do this. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden wants to see a vaccine, but is calling for transparency to make sure it's safe when released. Earlier in the day, nine of the world's leading drug makers announced a pact, promising not to release a vaccine that hasn't been thoroughly tested. This comes as a CBS poll shows only 21 percent of Americans say they would take a vaccine as soon as it's ready. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. For more on this, let's bring in internal medicine specialist and immunologist, Dr. Nita Ogden. Uh, Dr. Ogden, before we get to what's going on with AstraZeneca's clinical trials, I, I just want to draw our, our viewers' attention to what the President of the United States tweeted exactly six months ago today on March 9th. So this is the tweet. So last year, 37,000 Americans died from the common flu. It averages between 27,000 and 70,000 per year. Nothing is shut down. Life and the economy go on. At this moment, there are 546 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 22 deaths. Think about that, close quote. Now we're at 190,000. Uh, the numbers are staggering, and I just don't think that there is enough emphasis placed on our fellow citizens, people who live in this country, some citizens, some not, who have succumbed to this deadly pandemic. And for a lot of people, life is carrying on as usual. Uh, what do you make of the staggering numbers that this country has experienced in terms of loss of life vis-a-vis -vis others? You know, I think, well, good morning also, and I think it's really, when you actually see those numbers up on your screen, it is humbling and staggering. Uh, it's, it's just such a reality that we're dealing with this novel virus, and it, it just always astonishes me that just months ago, Go, we were leading these normal lives, and people continue to do that uh, while we continue to see numbers rise and surges throughout the country. I think one of the biggest problems here is that this country was just not organized uh, when the pandemic hit, and we never really had uh, a uniform message from leadership from the White House about uh, very simple measures that could have made a huge difference, like wearing a mask, the universal mask mandate. Um, of course, even in February, we even had some equivocal messaging about masks from uh, health leaders, but that quickly changed, and we still saw a lag uh, as we went 
into March and May. Uh, and again, this non-uniform message when other states opened up, even California was doing a great job. And then as they opened up, uh, people just seemed to forget that there was a virus in some ways. Um, we need to keep reiterating the message that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, that people are getting sick, that people can die, um, that herd immunity is not the answer here. I feel like if we continue to very strictly use these measures, we could have some sense of normalcy until we can get a medication or a vaccine to really return us to normal life. Yeah. Uh, a good reminder, um, Vlad and doctor, this is not the flu. And, you know, we've all spoken to people who have contracted COVID-19. And yeah, some people are asymptomatic. Other people, many people pull through, but it's not an easy go. They talk about how rough this illness can be on you, even if you are somebody who's likely to survive, which most people will. Um, but let us talk about AstraZeneca. Uh, you know, there's all these headlines, uh, you know, COVID vaccine hits a snag, but this is the point of these trials, of multiple phase trials, to figure out whether or not a vaccine is safe. How often does something like this happen? where a vaccine is put on hold for a bit. I'm so glad that you're talking about, about it that way, uh, rather with like this very alarmist. I mean, of course we should be concerned, but it's very often, more often than not, vaccine trials fail. Uh, and so I'm not surprised that this happened. Even AstraZeneca, you know, they're, they're talking about this as a routine step, a temporary pause. Um, as a physician, it's I see it as one case. Um, I'm not surprised in drugs and vaccines vaccines undergo trials, and there are many side effects um, that may lead to causes that we never know about. Uh, frankly, coronavirus and uh, this vaccine trial is more in the global spotlight than uh, any other sort of condition has ever been, and, and people don't hear about them. Uh, so I think it's a pr pretty routine thing that can occur. However, that being said, it is a serious adverse effect that I am concerned about. Um, so I think that we need to, you know, hear more information. Did it actually happen in somebody getting the vaccine or the placebo? Um, and again, it's just one case. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, but we do need to keep in mind that uh, this is part of the routine process of vaccines being vetted. And it's very reassuring that they're uh, taking it so seriously and they have those uh, safe, safety measures in place. It's an important point to make, uh, doctor, with regards to these clinical trials, and that being the point as to why we have clinical trials. I guess for a lot of Americans, and the CBS News polling shows this, that there is very little confidence um, in a subsequent vaccine, at least one that comes out uh, initially, just because the language that people have used from health officials to our political leaders has been so muddied. Uh, even the language that is used around the development of a vaccine, uh, Operation Warp Speed, to a lot of people that sounds like, you know, somebody might say, well, wait a second, I wanna make sure that it's safe as opposed to something that is just done at warp speed uh, before I take this. And you've already got people who are reluctant to take to get their flu vaccines. Um, and so that's perhaps why people, when they see this, they get a little concerned. But as you point out, this is sort of the normal uh, ebb and flow that happens in a clinical trial. Are you confident, though, that uh, the major pharmaceutical companies who've all pledged to not put something out, to not put something up for FDA approval if they don't believe is, is safe, is going to bear out? Yes, I am confident of that. And I'm so pleased that this has gotten such uh, international attention because I think that the medical community is rallying around this message now that a vaccine is not going to show up under political pressure for an election. Uh, certainly, Pfizer's now talking that they may have a vaccine that is available for emergency use only come October. The reality is that uh, any vaccine that's approved by the FDA needs to have a year of safety data in at least 3,000 participants. So for the rest of America, that's looking like 2021. And that's when you start hitting these regular benchmarks of vaccine safety. So I have faith in that message, and I have faith that there are enough unbiased uh, experts, scientists, uh, data and monitoring safety board, all those elements involved that would not allow a vaccine to be approved and used unless it had uh, gone through all those hoops involved with uh, checking safety and efficacy. All right, uh, Dr. Anita Ogden, thank you so much.